Welcome to session one with Tani McGregor. Tani McGregor brings over 30 years of professional experience to her popular sessions. Originally an elementary school teacher, Tani has served as a literacy coach, gifted intervention specialist, and pre-K staff developer. She's the author of three books, Comprehension Connections, Bridges to Strategic Reading, Lessons to Launch Literary and Nonfiction Texts, and her newest release, Ink and Ideas, Sketch Notes for Engagement, Comprehension, and Thinking, all published by Heinemann. Today, Tani will be presenting visual note-taking using Ink and Ideas to create meaningful sketch notes. Welcome, Tani. Good morning, everyone. I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, and it is a gray, warm day. Um, we're waiting and waiting for some great weather, and we haven't had much of it yet, so I hope it's nice where you are. I am thrilled to be here this morning, and it's been a couple of years um, since I had the privilege of taking part in the Ed Collab gathering, so I'm really happy to be back. And so this morning, um, I like to start just by saying uh, thank you to a couple of folks. First, thank you to Chris for being my partner today. And Chris and I have connections um, beyond the Ed Collab gathering. In fact, um, I'm really proud to um, know her as the chair of the board for the Indiana um, State Literacy Association, and they have their big annual conference coming up on September 14th in Noblesville, and you can find out more about that at indianareads.org. Um, but Chris is doing an amazing job um, preparing for that, and so if you're an Indiana teacher or live close by, um, check that out. And then, of course, I'd like to say thank you to Chris and the Ed Collab team for including me today. And um, I'm so excited to just share with you um, and just um, explore this whole idea of visual note taking. So um, in this session, I think if I have to think about our time and how it's allotted, uh, I think we'll spend a little bit of time just looking at the why and really just sort of building the case for visual note taking um, if a case needs to be built at all. I mean, there's so much so much to draw from as far as evidence and research um, and practical application that's bearing itself out every day and being shared widely um, about the benefits of making your thinking known um, on paper or on the screen. Um, but we'll look at a little bit of that foundational piece first. And then I have some wonderful examples I'd like to share with you across grade levels, across content areas, um, most of them from students who are exploring their thinking with pen or stylus in hand. And so I know you'll enjoy taking a look at those. And then last but not least, uh, if I can budget my time well, then we'll look at what a launching practice might look like. Um, an actual lesson that you might do with students or with teachers you work with or even engage in yourself um, to get yourself ready to be a more fluent sketch noter um, so that the idea of adding visual elements isn't something that gets in your way, gets in the way of the thinking. So that's where we're headed today. And I'm happy this session will be archived like all of the sessions at the gathering uh, so that you can share it with those who might not be able to be here today. So um, let's take a look at a few pieces um, that I think are, you know, maybe sort of misconceptions or um, maybe some confusion or cloudiness that we might need to clear up. Uh, and so that'll be all part of the why here for just a little bit. So this is a page from my sketch notebook. I have a few sketch notebooks where I just use markers or paper uh, and paper. And um, this one, actually, if I'm going to be working with students, um, especially like intermediate kids and older, I'll show them this image and let them know that these four green arrows are actually pointing to some benefits that we can reap from making our thinking known with pen. And when I say pen or pencil or marker, it could just as well be a stylus. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, but I'll ask kids a question with each of these green arrows. 
Um, for example, the first one, boost recall up in the top left-hand corner. I might ask students, have you ever been reading something? And then like shortly after you finish reading it, you think to yourself, like, I hardly remember anything I just read. And so like most kids will nod in agreement, raise their hands, I'll do the same. And I'll just, you know, remind them that, you know, most of us can't remember every single thing we read. But one thing that has been proven to help with that is to actually make a visual representation of what's important or what's interesting when you're reading, reformulating your thinking a bit uh, in a way that's shareable and permanent. And so um, sketch notes can do that for us. And by the way, I'm using the term sketch notes um, it was a term that was coined some years ago by an amazing sketchnoter and sketchnote advocate, Mike Rode. And um, so his work heavily influences mine. We could call these visual notes. We could call it visual marginalia. We could talk about it in terms of non-linguistic representation. There are lots of ways. Um, but I, I really like the term sketch notes, and I'm glad Mike made that term popular because it says what it is and and it's just a, a concise nice way to talk about um, visual representation so then that second green arrow over on the upper right hand side um, you know, our thinking is a deeper different kind of thinking with pen in hand and we've got to stop and consider our thinking it's a more metacognitive process um, when I'm reading or listening listening to music, looking at an image and sketchnoting. Um, it's just a, uh, a kind of thinking that I can't get any other way, um, for me at least, and that's a personal, uh, that's my opinion there. Um, but I've seen that kind of experience repeat itself with, with the students I work with. And then down in the lower left-hand corner, maybe one of my favorite benefits, um, we can actually stay focused and keep ourselves from the tendency to daydream if we're sketchnoting. Um, there are some studies that help us know that this is likely and suggest this to us, um, but I can say as well from interviewing lots of kids and teachers and from having many experiences myself when I'm reading something where I don't have a lot of background knowledge or maybe it's not of interest to me, um, I can actually keep my mind where I need it to be uh, if I'm making that visual reformulation on the page. And then I guess it goes without saying, it's a different kind of engagement. It's less passive and more active. And for all those reasons, and yet another one I'll talk about in a moment, uh, I think we should consider sketchnoting as a viable response option for our students. So here's a photograph. And if you have had a chance to look at the free download um, of the first part of my book, Ink and Ideas, you've probably seen this photograph. This is a photo of my grandparents, my maternal grandparents, and five of their 10 children, their five youngest. Um, in fact, that's my mom in the blue dress in the front row. Um, but I show you this picture just to say that I have a personal connection to this whole idea of making your thinking visible in the moment, this live kind of sketch noting. And that's because I watched my grandpa um, over and over again with only a fifth grade education. Um, you know, I, I watched him read and write all through his adult life and saw him um, more often than not pick up a pen to make his way through text. So he would use all kinds of sketch noting features and we have records of this in like our family's Bible, um, but he would do this in other ways too, like in newspapers even, filling the margins with um, arrows and boxes and like um, frames and asking questions and, you know, that kind of note taking, that authentic kind of note taking that we've encouraged kids to do for a very long time. But it just seemed as though the pen helped him understand. And now that I've gotten older and, and thought about this more, I realized that, you know, that was his technology at the time. That was his strategy. Um, that was the way that he found work for him to make what Harvard calls um, his reading thinking intensive. And so um, I know I have a lot of students like this, too. I have students who tend to want to have a pen in their hand when they're listening or reading and 
I always think about my grandpa and how sort of he taught me to, to think that way. Um, there are some other pages in my sketch notebook that I often share with students, um, even my youngest students, and I work in uh, a couple of schools regularly here in the Cincinnati area where I'm in classrooms, planning lessons with teachers, um, teaching, you know, um, uh, different content areas and all of that. So I've been exploring this with students uh, frequently over the past couple of years, but even my youngest students will, um, they, they love to recognize that the word ink resides right there inside the word think. Uh, I think that's a good way to remember what sketch notes do for us. They help us to ink our thinking. And I have a couple of quotations that I'll share with you today. I love this one from Shane Parrish, that it's really not about taking notes. I mean, that's like sort of if we have to put this into a, a category of strategies that we use for understanding, I guess it's a note taking strategy sort of, but it's really more about getting us in the game with overlapping our thinking with the authors or, um, or the artists or the photographer or the songwriter. Um, it reminds me of this movie that I saw a few years back called Words and Pictures. And sometimes I'll even weave my fingers together um, when I'm with students to show that that's what sketch notes really can do for us. They allow us to use our language and uh, images together at the very same time to communicate. And my favorite quotation about this is from William Albert Allard, as you see there. Um, Words and pictures can work together to communicate more powerfully than either alone. So one misconception I think that is uh, common is just that sketch notes are just about making cute notes or you know going to Pinterest or somewhere and finding a font you really like and um, using color so it's more attractive and all those things might happen as a result of of you know becoming interested in sketch noting and trying it out but it's really about your thinking first and foremost uh, you know that's that's the that's where it's at that's the the underpinning of it all and uh, everything else as Jeffrey Zeldman says here um, could just be thought about as decoration if it doesn't have the content woven in. So this quotation, content precedes design. Design in the absence of content is not design, it's decoration, um, sort of solidifies that for me. I think it's, I think it's a case of, of and and not or. The design really helps us further our thinking and um, bring together all of the um, the separate parts of our thinking uh, and can help us become more fluent with the pen in our hand. Um, but for us as teachers, you know, we know that it's, it's going to have its roots in new information, new things that surprise us, um, ideas that are, are presented to us from all different sources. So it's really all both of them together. So if we were together face to face, and I wish we were, um, we would have some chance to talk about a couple of, I think, um, pieces that really have influenced me and might be important to you too. Um, and so I want to share with you a couple of research studies that, uh, and we'll just look at, I think there are three here. That, like I said, if we were together face to face, we would have some turning and talking going on. Uh, we might do some mingling around. So too bad we can't do that this morning. Um, but I'd like for you to consider um, what the next three slides have to say. And as you'll see when um, I go back to my slide and share it with you in a moment, there's um, a website that can be very helpful um, when you're starting out as a sketch noter and even um, as you become more skilled, and that's the nounproject.com. I even used one of their icons on this slide that you just saw and you're going to see again. Um, it's actually this huge, huge um, collection of all kinds of easy to draw um, ideas for icons that represent abstract ideas. So just know that's something you could explore later if you'd like. And there's a free version of that. And I've used it plenty of times when I just need to get some ideas uh, about something that's not quite in my visual lexicon yet. So back to my slides. We'll try out these um, conversation pieces. And so here's the first one, the drawing effect. And this is pretty recent. 
2016, as you can see there. So the researchers did a series of experiments. They wanted to see if you get benefits from drawing and they found that your memory is enhanced. And the study goes into why that is. But the last part here on the slide is what I think is important right now at the moment for us. And that's that this drawing effect, these benefits of drawing something hold true. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you are a talented visual artist or not. It's not dependent on that. There's not a relationship between how um, skilled you are as a visual artist. It's just the act of drawing something actually helps your memory to hold on to something um, in a deeper way and to remember it longer. So I think that's really interesting and so good for kids to know, uh, especially since, as you might have heard before, um, researcher Brene Brown often calls it art scars. So like, you know, by the time we get to maybe I see it even as young as third or fourth grade, kids having this belief that they can't draw something um, that doesn't have a, a heavy influence or an influence at all on how beneficial sketch notes can be for you. And then there's the whole idea of remembering, because we've known this for a long time, that note taking is valuable. We remember more when we write it down. We remember more of what we hear. So if you think about podcasts or lectures or, um, you know, this is true for me, even like if I'm at church last Saturday night at church, I made some sketch notes while the speaker was speaking and it helped me hold on to what was important for me and remember it later on. So when we take notes, we recall more, we synthesize more. And even these researchers go on to say, we have a tendency to perform better on assessments. And then last but not least, this one. Uh, this is also pretty recent and uh, it's not on that slide that I showed you with the green arrows, but I really need to make a space for it. I'll read it to you, even though you've got it on the screen. I think it's important enough that we receive it in a couple of ways. Creating artful sketch notes may do something else for us, something that kids and adults desperately need, reduce stress. In a study conducted by, and pardon me if my pronunciations of the names aren't correct, Kaimal, Ray, and Muniz, 2016, the stress-related hormone cortisol was measured after subjects created visual art. An incredible 75% saw a reduction in their cortisol levels. So if all those reasons um, that I shared before weren't enough, um, this one for sure, um, we would probably all agree um, offers us a benefit that we desperately need. And so for all those reasons and more, I think we should consider sketch notes as an option, um, as something kids can choose to do to share their thinking. And really everything, um, everything that I'm sharing in this um, session today, it, it goes for us as adults too when we're learning and processing information. So you see here another page for my sketchbook, and this is just a little exploration I did over a week's time or so, where I was trying to find examples of people across time and across disciplines who engaged in not just notebooking, but um, recording their thinking in a sketch noted sort of way. So symbols, pictures, colors, features, and you can see a lot of names you'll know right here. Um, and since I made this a couple of years ago, there are so many more names I could add, but you see visual artists here, of course, you see musicians and entrepreneurs and scientists, and we've got everybody from Da Vinci who left us you know, page after page of sometimes just um, messy thinking um, with symbols and words. And then we've got contemporaries like Jane Goodall, who has hundreds of thousands of pages of notebooks and sometimes uses her own color coding system um, to make her thinking known. So after I started thinking about this even more and thinking about all of these brilliant people who have proven to us that, you know, this is a great way to hold on to your thinking and make, like I said before, like make it permanent and shareable. It makes me even wonder more, like, why don't we offer this up as a viable response option for students? And um, 
I alluded to this before, but when I'm talking about sketch noting, I'm thinking about digital sketch notes. I'm thinking about flare pens and a notebook. I'm thinking about um, you know all of the ways that we can make our thinking visible. And there are so many great apps, so many opportunities that don't cost a thing um, to um, use digital tools to share our thinking. And one of the schools where I work, fourth and fifth graders use iPads. They use the app Paper by WeTransfer. You can see their logo right there. Um, so there are a lot of intuitive ways to use technology to help us to get over those fears of what we can't do with pen and paper. And sometimes we're more pleased with what we see on the screen than what we might be able to create on paper. And I think there are advantages to both. And I definitely think it's an and and not an or. So let's move on now to just looking at um, uh, a set of examples from students. Um, another disadvantage of us not being together in the same room right now is that if we were together, I would bring my suitcase of pins and we'd all have some sketch mats and we'd try some things out together. Um, but this will be valuable too, I hope, um, that you'll see just all of the different ways that we could use this across the day. And we're always interested in ways to get kids thinking deeply across the day, and, and this is just one of them. So um, I don't think these are really in order, like by grade level or anything, but we're gonna start out with a first grade sketch note. And this was in the spring of first grade. In this particular class, the teacher had been learning about sketch noting and wanted to try it with her students and she actually used it during writing workshop and when kids were um, doing a little bit of research in the spring about a person of their choice this particular student was reading about Abraham Lincoln had a book baggie filled with books about Abe and was doing some reading and then she chose to sketch note all of her new thinking on one page. Some people call these one pagers or idea floods or brain dumps, whatever you call it. It's just this idea of trying to put all of your important new learning on one page. And so I thought hers was amazing. And I especially love the little wedding scene over on the left. Um, so it could be all in pencil and she used very few words. But you could approach sketch noting like this. Um, this sketch note was created um, actually, Chris, in a school not too far from where you live um, and near Lebanon, Indiana. And this particular student had text on the left hand side. The text was chunked into pieces, informational text on the right hand side, some little spaces to sketch note along the way. And I witnessed this lesson where in my friend Lowell's class where the kids read a little bit, talked and sketch noted read a bit more, talked and sketch noted. And as they progressed through the text this way, um, so much meaning was created in a social way through conversation, but also with pen or colored pencil or crayon in hand. And what I really loved about this sketch note is that um, not only did the sketch noter capture some facts like, oh, here are all the states where the Dust Bowl was really adversely affecting like the economy and um, people's lives in many other ways. Um, but in that middle sketch note, th there's the farmer asking, will I get enough air today? And that that wasn't in the text, but it shows a depth of thinking there that I might not otherwise know about if sketch noting wasn't an option. So when here you've got a third grade example and gosh, this is far from using just pencil. I mean, this particular student loves to use color and she put her big topic right in the middle of the page and sort of mind mapped her way out, uh, webbed her way out with her thinking. She's including facts. She's including some of her own thinking like brr, it's cold. And um, I can really get inside, you know, that invisible thinking of her, hers to, to see what was going on when she read this article about the Iditarod race. And this one's a fifth grade example. This is Ben's work. He had just finished, um, reading the book Seed Folks with uh, some other kids in his in a literature circle. And some of the kids had decided to sketch note their way through the book. If you're familiar with the book Seed Folks, you know it's organized into these little tiny chapters and every chapter is 
the story told by a different person. So it worked out well. Ben and some friends took one box, and these are just like little post-it note sized boxes, pencil only, quick sketch note to summarize and synthesize the chapter. And so what you're looking at here is six chapters worth of sketch notes. And I was in the classroom the day that this literacy or literature circle um, reconvened and they were having some conversation about um, big themes, possible themes in the story and using their sketch notes as a support. So it was a great way to wrap it all up together with rich conversation with, you know, so much, so much to look at and talk about right there in their hands. So here's one from seventh grade. And this, this one's actually featured as a vignette in my new book, Ink and Ideas. Uh, at the end of each chapter, there's a few green pages where a particular student is featured and his or her teacher or parent um, gives us a little narrative of, you know, what happened when the student was sketch noting. So here you see Andrew's work. He was um, being read too. It was uh, a read aloud time in his seventh grade ELA class. And I believe the teacher was reading Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. And so this particular student told me when I interviewed him about this afterwards, because we were amazed with how he was able to show his thinking. He said to be able to listen like this was a dream come true for him. And it left us with no doubt uh, that he was thinking deeply while he was listening. So uh, some of these next examples are just things that have been shared with me from teachers near and far. And actually, if you want to see more of these examples, I'm going to share a QR code with you in a moment. So if you have a QR code reader, you wanna be ready for that. Um, but otherwise you can go back and look, there's a link to, you could review this session later. Um, so um, Andrea shared with me, her junior high students often use KWL charts, but um, the difference is they've made them visual. And this is one of those things that I thought, wow, I have never thought about doing this. And so you can see the first one on the left is a, um, from an article about glowing sharks and on the right hand side, um, the student was reading something about the Underground Railroad. And I just love the, the nice balance of icons and colors and questions and words and phrases. Um, it gives us a peek inside that student's thinking uh, that we might not otherwise gain. And of course, in the science classroom, sketch noting is part of what many science teachers and science students do um, to deepen their understanding. So my colleague Jessica shared this with me from one of her science classes. And I think it's just a good reminder that scientists often speak with a visual language as do mathematicians. And I think in those ways, this practice really helps us remember that thinking is the thread that ties us all together, no matter what we teach. Um, a colleague, Heather, teaches math to gifted students and she sketch noted her problem of the day. She prepared this in advance, put it under the document camera, shared it with her students, and then they in turn sketch noted their possible answers uh, and their thinking back to her. And then um, this one is from uh, fourth grade, I think, and another reminder of something that many of us have done and we've known to be true for a long time, that drawing a quick sketch can actually enhance our retention and understanding of vocabulary words. So in a reader's notebook or in a vocab notebook, uh, it's a great thing to do just to take a few minutes to make a quick visual representation. And this is a seventh grade sketch mat, like 11 by 17. I often use a big sketch mat like this for purposes, all different purposes. But this is from a teacher who shared this with me, um, Shane and his seventh grade class. Some students were reading The Outsiders and they just were thinking all the way through the book about possible themes. And he prompted them to uh, just generate small icons that would symbolize their thinking all the way through. So, so much thinking on that big sketch mat. And we just have a few more examples to, sh I just have a few more examples to share, and then we'll talk about how to launch this practice with students. Um, this one, a high school example, pencil only on sticky notes. So, you know, you don't need a lot of extra materials, just what you've got already. 
but this is Jack's work and he decided to devote one sticky note to uh, each of the scenes as he was reading Romeo and Juliet. What a great way um, that he has chosen to make meaning for himself. And I should add here too that, you know, of course, I um, am not saying or, and I don't believe that this practice is like the be all end all for every student or all of us. Uh, of course, there's not a, a, a strategy like that. I'm always suspicious of someone presents something that way. Um, but in, instead, I think we, we do have students who will take us up on this choice if we offer it to them and many more who can explore their thinking and become more metacognitive with pen in hand because they never would have tried it on their own had we not launched the practice with them. Um, these index cards were shared with me from a teacher, Cassie, um, from Mobile, Alabama, where she just gives her kids a, an index card at the end of a unit, at the end of a really rich lesson, especially around informational text, and asks her students to show everything they know, like what's all your new learning? You just have a really small space to show it and you only have maybe a few minutes at the end of class. So you see a student who shares what they learned about crawfish and on the right, all about getting flu shot. This one is also a featured vignette in my book, Ink and Ideas. And this is Ty's work. I think it's amazing. Ty uses pencil. This is from a biology class um, where he, again, used a one pager to try to synthesize all his new learning. And yes, his is highly detailed and yes, he is very talented, um, but it just is a reminder to me that um, the content area is a perfect place to um, you know, introduce sketch noting and to find ways to use it. And I think Ty's uh, sketch notes are just incredible. In some of the schools where I work, sketch noting has really taken hold. Um, Chris and I were just talking before our session started about a school we're both familiar with and how it's been embraced there. In this particular school, this is Air Elementary School here in Cincinnati. Some of the kids last year had a sketch noting club where they just covered the lunch table with white paper, brought what book they're reading, brought their lunch along and some pins and had a great time. And I was, I was so happy to be invited one day, just talking and sketching about books. Um, so what a great way to enjoy sketch noting. And there's a lot of Doritos going on in there, I see too. Um, so here's um, a QR code, as promised, from uh, ILA last year. Um, Paula Bork, um, Buffy Hamilton, and I did a session about visual note taking. And at that link, um, there's a shortened URL for you. At that link or using the QR code, you'll find dozens of sketch noted examples across grade levels, across content areas, even some college students and teachers, um, how they're keeping track of their thinking and recording their thinking. Um, so that might be helpful to you as well. So um, now I think we'll just transition. We've got like 15 minutes left. Time goes so fast. Um, where I'd just like to show you what it might look like if we were launching this practice with um, students. So um, I've used a launching lesson similar to what you will see here with kindergarten students, with college students, with teachers in professional learning um, sessions. And so, um, you know, I think you can do it many different ways, but a couple of things I would say are important um, to think about. One would be that um, in, in, you know, the older the students get, um, the more likely it would be that kids are, um, might feel insecure. Some kids might feel insecure about sharing their thinking this way or might even come in with some preconceived ideas about how they're not good as an artist. I've had teachers tell me, you know, I'm just not creative, which I always disagree with. If you're a teacher, that is the definition of being creative. Um, but we sometimes confuse this fact that, you know, you don't have to um, be a visual artist to engage in meaningful sketch noting. That's really not what it's about. So I want to present a launching experience that's really supportive. And so um, we'll take it slow 
and I'll share with kids just a few features of sketch noting that they can use right away and that um, will actually help them get their thinking out more quickly. And it's just such a, um, a nice way to move from the abstract to the concrete. And once they feel that, uh, a lot of kids will give it a, a, a second chance and start to believe in themselves that they can do it. So I think of it like this, you know, we all have a lexicon. We're all increasing our vocabularies all the time. Um, I heard our opening speaker today talking about how just his access to so many books. And I love that part about the dictionary, like loving to look at the dictionary, me too. Um, but that, you know, we're all like growing our vocabularies all the time and our students are too. So think of it like that with visual, a visual lexicon. With learning these six or seven features that I'll show you now, then as soon as you have those and you've practiced them for a minute or two, then they're part of your lexicon. And if you want to, you know, show in your notes um, something that you normally would write out in a few sentences, one of these features can do the job for you. And in that way, I think some kids start to realize how much freedom is involved in note taking this way. Um, it's, in, it's all about so much choice. And we all know how important that is. I've also had students and teachers say to me, this is the first time I've ever cared about my own notes so much. Um, so I love hearing that. So what we'll do now, I'll show you some features. If you have paper and pen uh, at the ready, then feel free to sketch note along. And if you do try some of these features, you might want to put them, um, like tweet them out so we can see what you've been up to. That would be great. Uh, but I'm going to go back to my slides and just share with you a few features that you could launch with kids um, in this like first lesson. And I only usually spend like if I'm in secondary, maybe a bell or a period launching this practice, sort of blessing the practice, um, giving it a name and noticing what it can do and then offering it up as a choice after that. So the first thing I would do is just to let kids know that just by varying the lettering style, you can, that, that can serve a purpose for you in your note taking. So we might take a couple of minutes to just choose a letter of the alphabet and I'll ask them just to tinker around a bit and come up with some different styles of that letter. So a lot of times kids will use the first letter or their first name, which is what I did here. And all of these, um, Examples that you're going to see are just on white index cards with a black sharpie, and I just drop them into a slide. So I'll show this one to kids. I know there's always that rub between like, do you show kids the example first, or do you ask them to do their own thinking first? And with this, I, I generally show them some examples and then give them time to like um, elaborate on that and vary it a little bit, but while they might be working on trying out some lettering styles, we'll just talk about why this might be important. Like maybe you want to draw attention to vocabulary words or some new idea, or maybe it's the, the headings and subheadings that you're going to vary, where you'll vary the lettering style. But in, in, in all those cases, you can show importance with the lettering you use. You can also help yourself to organize your thinking by varying the lettering styles. And for some sketch noters, this is the feature that they mainly use uh, to make visual notes. So that would be one. Another feature would be using connectors and arrows. And so I'll show this image to kids and just say, you know, like, these are so easy. You could choose a couple that you might want to use. But again, let's talk about why this would be important. In our note taking, maybe we want to show sequence. Maybe we want to show cause and effect. Or maybe it's relationships between people or ideas. And so a quick arrow or connecting line might be able to say a lot for us. Like a picture's worth a thousand words. So one of these little features can really save you time in getting your thinking out, especially if you're listening. Um, you know, during a read aloud or listening to a podcast or a lecture. So changing up the lettering style, looking at connectors and arrows, 
some other features we might want to add to our lexicon would be frames and bullets. Frames uh, or just sort of organizers that we can use. Um, we might talk while we're experimenting with this about how messy our thinking is and sometimes we need a little help getting it onto the paper. Uh, I might even compare it to graphic organizers that we sometimes use, but we're really creating a graphic organizer for ourselves. It might be as simple as parentheses or brackets around something, or maybe you want to use a dialogue bubble or something like that. Um, but even just adding something as simple as a frame or two, uh, my friend Paula Bork, um, Stenhouse author, is really good at using frames to make her notes so visual. Um, and then bullets, this is maybe not the most important one, but we could use some little icon or symbol when we're adding an unordered list to our notes. Um, the example I often give is a third grade boy who used little tornadoes uh, in the sketch noted uh, article he was reading about uh, tornadoes. So varying up all of the traditional things that we do in, in conventional writing can bring a lot of joy and pleasure to note taking, make it personal and make it meaningful. A um, couple more features, faces and figures. Faces, I, I want to make sure that kids know how to represent big human emotions because coding the text that way can be a really meaningful way um, to you know, make connections with the text. So if kids can show happiness and anger and frustration and boredom and love, um, I did all of that right there with a black marker and not detailed. And that's the difficult thing for some students. They want to make things so detailed. Um, so, uh, but with sketch notes, generally we're making simple drawings so that we can capture something quickly. And likewise with figures, stick people are just great. Uh, angle the arms and legs. You can thicken up the body with a geometric shape if you want to. Um, but it just you just want to get the big ideas down. And so I want to prove to kids and adults too that you can do this. Um, and then the last feature that I'd mention here, although there are many more we could you know venture into, would just be word pictures. Capturing an abstract idea um, with a simple icon, that's where the noun project can come in handy, add a word or a phrase to it, and then as kids become more skilled, they tend to represent more conceptual ideas um, with the icon, like the house, for example, might mean a house um, to a beginning sketch noter, but for someone who's more skilled or um, the older kids get, that house might represent security or family or memories or something like that. So those would be the sketch notes that sketch note features that I'd introduce in a lesson. I'd put a big piece of chart paper on the wall, model it, have a couple of kids who maybe want to do the same join me, put it under the document camera, make it public, um, take a gallery walk and take a look at what everybody else is doing and realize we're all just learning this visual language together. And the two questions, I know we're almost out of time, the two driving questions that I'll often share with students, and these are the two questions that maybe I first learned from Stephanie Harvey and Ann Goodvis when I was first reading their comprehension work and strategies that work and then using the comprehension toolkit, um, what's important and what's interesting. Those questions drive me when I'm reading anything, even if I don't have a pen in my hand. Um, but if you have a student who's like wondering, like, where do I start or what what do I even put on the paper? Those two questions can be good um, drivers um, to get you started. And then likewise, with one of the classes I worked with, we just had a problem with like perfectionism. So kids wanted to know like, what's the right way to do this? Or what what are the right things to put in a sketch note? And so we made this whole platter filled with all of these things that would be perfectly wonderful to include in a sketch note, not just names and dates and facts, but feelings and surprises and controversial things, comparisons, big ideas, relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end of a launching lesson, I might give kids some information and let's try one together. Maybe a couple of images, 
Um, this is a person I'm really interested in, in, another Ohioan, Grandma Gatewood. And I've found that a lot of Ohio kids don't know much about her. So I've been sharing some picture books about her. And, and so I might just give kids a little bit of information just like this and a couple of images and talk to them about what I know about this subject and let them sketch note and I'll sketch note along with them. A really low pressure, um, low stakes, joy-filled experience uh, is a great way to launch this practice. And so I know our time's out, but if you choose to launch this practice with kids or teachers, uh, of course, the time for reflection at the end is always great. Asking, how do you think you might try this out? And then the bigger question for us today is, how do you think we could use sketch notes to help strengthen instruction across grade levels and content areas? So um, there is a free sample chapter from Ink and Ideas available at the Heinemann website. And I think it's maybe the first 40 pages or something. It includes all of the research and the why behind the practice. And so it's a good place to get started. So just know that that is there for you. And um, if you do any tweeting about uh, this session or if you try something out, I would love to see what you do with what you learned. And if you use the hashtag ink and ideas, I'll be able to find you quickly. And you're, of course, welcome to um, contact me at my email address, and that's tanny at fuse.net. So thanks, everybody. I think we're a minute over, so I've got to stop sharing my slides now and uh, just wish you a happy Saturday, happy weekend, happy spring, and thanks for joining me today. And again, thank you, Chris and the EdClab team and uh, and Kristen, too, for being my partner today. Thank you. Thank you, Tani, for an outstanding session. Um, special shout out. Thank you, Dr. Mary Howard, for live tweeting um, the entire session. And um, she shared a lot of gems from uh, Tani's presentation. So we invite everyone to join us for the session two workshops, Good Intentions Gone Bad, Sparking Bottom-Up Cultural Change, Impeach the President's Dream, successful integration of ELA and social studies using texts addressing cultural diversity. Thanks and have a great Saturday.